Hey guys, welcome back to our two-part series where we talk about how to build a great network into your new construction home. And in this video, we're gonna focus on the fun stuff, the equipment, how to put this thing together in order to achieve what you are looking for in a network, whether that is something a little bit more shiny and special and high tech, that's something like a network rack, or whether you just want to go simple. Maybe you have a shelf hidden somewhere and you just want to turn this thing on and have it work so you have no dead spots in your home. Now, if you haven't checked out part one, guys, I encourage you to go do so. That portion of the video really focuses on the planning stage, how to get cables where you want them, things to be thinking about for your cabling as you're putting this thing together. So when you get to this part, it's really just a plug and play process. So I encourage you to go watch that and then come back to this video and it will help you paint the picture about what kind of network you're gonna want in your new home right after this. Real quick, I wanna just kind of paint the picture about what type of network we're talking about here, all right? So you obviously have the option to just go down to a Best Buy, get on Amazon and buy a mesh system, plug it in, open up the app and turn it on. But I highly recommend having cabling put in place so you can have a part Wi-Fi and part hardwired home. Things like streaming and gaming and things like that are always gonna work better with a physical connection to the internet. So why not plan your home so it can help? But what are the components of a network? We're just gonna recap that. I did talk about it in the first video, but we're just gonna kind of go over that again. So if you look at the diagram on the screen, Basically what we're talking about is your internet is gonna come into your home and plug into a modem or router or modem router combo. It's basically you're gonna get fed an internet connection from your internet provider. From there, it's gonna go into the router and the router is the brains of the operation. It is what creates the networks, defines whether or not you have VLAN set up, things of that nature, depending on how crazy you wanna go with this thing. However, there are routers that just, you turn it on and it just works. There's no fancy little pieces of it. And those are gonna be a more affordable option. Next, we're gonna plug the router into the switch. And the switch is what connects this thing all together. And again, there are multiple flavors of switch. There's unmanaged switches and managed switches. A managed switch is gonna give you some of that extra security enhancements to be able to do VLANs and create IoT networks and things like that. So if that's the part you're looking for, guys, tune in for that, we are gonna talk about it. But the switch is where all your cables are gonna connect and that makes every jack that you've pulled in your house, behind TVs, in offices and everything, become hot. So you can plug it in and get to the internet with a hard line connection. And the last thing we're gonna talk about instead of a mesh system is we're gonna talk about wiring up physical access points in your home to give you the Wi-Fi coverage you need. The thing I love about Wi-Fi access points is, especially like a ceiling mounted one, okay, is it gives you the flexibility to put Wi-Fi wherever you want it. You don't have to worry about a credenza sitting over there and an outlet being nearby. You can literally design this thing how you want. And we're gonna talk about how to do that effectively as well in this video, guys. So watch all the way to the end because I'm gonna give you some special free tools you can use to kind of plan your Wi-Fi um, no matter which route you go. So that's what we're talking about, guys. We got your router, goes into your switch, goes to your access points, and then your switch is connected to all your devices in your home where you decided to put cable based on the part one of this series. All right, so we're gonna get going on that. I'm, and then the first part of this video here, we're gonna talk about just how to put together a very simple and affordable network. Just something to turn it on and keep your budget low, but you still get the benefits of full coverage in your home and everything. So tune in for that. And then we're gonna get into a little bit more of an advanced style network like what you see behind me. And then we're even gonna talk about a hybrid. So this is gonna be a lengthy video, but we're gonna talk about a lot of different things that can help you with your planning. And we're gonna cover a lot of different bases. So let's get started. All right, guys, we're back. So here's, in this part of the video, we are gonna be talking about how to put together an affordable option, right? So you can go pretty big with these things and that's really obvious. Now, one of the things, and if you've watched any of my other videos or you subscribe, which you should, definitely subscribe. We're gonna be talking about stuff like this a lot, but you guys, if you've watched any of my stuff before, you guys know I really like Ubiquiti as a in the home network space. It's, it's more of a prosumer equipment type product that really opens up a lot of benefits like being able to see what's actually happening on your network, being able to enhance your security with either web filtering or, or um, VLANs and things of that nature. It makes it 
so the everyday consumer can grasp those things without having a Cisco, you know, CCNA certification or anything crazy. It's all done with a GUI interface and really, really easy. As a matter of fact, I have videos on Ubiquity specifically that show you how to do that, but that's not what this video is about. However, that is not the only way to do this, guys. You don't have to do that to have a great network, right? There's, I know a lot of people and I've helped a lot of people just put in something simple. So we're gonna talk about that right now. So the best, probably, I'm not gonna say the best, the easiest way, the most affordable way to do this is to start with just using the router that your internet provider gives you. Now, in most cases, your internet provider is going to give you a router. Now, the router is doing multiple things. It's doing Wi-Fi, which we'll talk about a little bit because we don't want to use that for Wi-Fi. You can, but we don't want to. But you're, it, they're already giving you one. You're already paying for that. It's You're going to have one in your house. Now, in the houses where I install something like this, typically we go into that router and we basically treat it like a modem. We turn off all the functionality of a router so we can use this router to do all the fun stuff in the house. However, you don't have to do that. If you just want this thing to be simple, you can use the router that your internet provider gives you, okay? And the internet provider routers, it's already you're already paying for it, right? So you would just go, that would become your router, it would plug into whatever switch you buy and your switch would power everything else in your home. Now, you're gonna lose some capabilities. Your network's capabilities is really defined by your router and most internet service provider routers don't have a ton of fancy bells and whistles, okay? They are just gonna be a turn it on and you go. You get a 192.168 address, all your equipment's on the same network and away you go, all right? So that would be, probably the most affordable way to do the router. Now, if you don't like that option and, or maybe your route, your, um, your internet provider does things a little bit different. Okay. Maybe they just give you a physical handoff or maybe they, you don't like the router they give you. Maybe you got rid of your router, uh, like for a Cox or a Comcast or a Spectrum and, and you just have a modem. The modem is not a router. The modem is just allowing their service to connect into your house and it needs a router plugged into it. So in a case like that, where you, again, wanna go simple and not like this, okay? Go down to Best Buy, get on Amazon and just purchase a router, okay? Just purchase something that you like. It could even be an Orbi mesh system router. It could be a Google Puck router, an Eero, whatever, but you only need one. We're not gonna be using it for Wi-Fi in this scenario. So. Really, I would just encourage you to get something simple in the price range you're looking to do. It doesn't have to have a ton of bells and whistles. All this thing is really gonna do is receive the connection from our modem and plug into our switch, which manages our access points and gives us our system. It is just the brains of being able to uh, navigate our traffic where it needs to go, whether it's to the internet or you're sending a job to the printer, the router's doing that. So. Guys, just go get yourself something simple. I really like TP-Link. I think they make a decent product and they're very affordable and they, they typically focus on network equipment, which means they're pretty darn good at it. So, you know, if you're just wanting to get something that, uh, you know, is a proven brand and doesn't come with all this other crap they're trying to sell you, I would recommend maybe looking at a TP-Link brand router. Okay, so the next thing we wanna talk about is the switch. Now the switch over here, on this side, <laughs> I don't know left or right, right? So the switch over here on this side is what we refer to as a managed PoE switch, right? So what does that mean? It means that it is managed, so it allows me to go in and make configurations to it or see what's plugged into it or or make changes to the configuration so I it can do what I want it to do. It is capable of doing VLANs and all the IoT security and things of that nature. The PoE portion of it means power over ethernet. Now power over ethernet is what we're gonna use to power cameras nowadays, uh, digital cameras for security. It's gonna power our access points and things of that nature. So you don't have to run both an internet cable and power of some kind to those locations. It's getting both its network connectivity and its power from the same cable, all right? So most switches that are PoE, and we're gonna talk about that on the simple side too, most switches that are PoE have power limitations. Is it PoE or PoE plus? Um, how does that kind of play into it? What's the max power of the switch? How many ports does it have? Of those ports, how many of those ports are actually providing PoE or power over ethernet to the devices that are plugged into them? Because you got to look at all those little flavors. So let's get back to our simple example here with a switch. What you're going to want, 
And in this, a lot of this is going to be based off part one. How many cables did you run in your house? Okay. All right. That's part one. Part two, how many of those cables are going to power something like an access point or a camera? All right. That's really the meat and potatoes of what we're talking about here. You got to do a little homework and find out what, how much power you're really going to need in your home. So if I was to just go out and just blindly give you some advice because uh, based off typical homes and, and, and the number of PoE devices in a home, I would say get a 16 or 24 unport, 16 or 24 port unmanaged PoE plus switch. That's what I would recommend. That's going to cover a lot of bases. It's going to be able to power most of the cameras out there, most of the access points out there. It really is the standard of today. And you really won't pay a ton of money for it, guys. Um, an unmanaged PoE switch, either from like Netgear or again, TP-Link, like I mentioned earlier, um, they really uh, are fairly affordable. They're not going to cost you a lot of money. You get a lot of bang for your buck. So that's what I would recommend blindly is just get an unmanaged PoE switch. Typically, and this is where some of the costs fluctuate. So you want to read the print on this, guys. But uh, a PoE switch that has 16 ports on it total, right? Sometimes only eight of those provide power and the other eight are just gigabit ports, okay? So you have to look at that. Do all 16 ports provide power or do just some of them do it, okay? So you got to know how many devices in your home have power or may need power in the future. Maybe you didn't add cameras today, but you're going to add them later, right? So these are the things we want to be thinking about as we're putting this thing together. But just blind advice, not knowing your situation or how many cables you pulled. Obviously, if you pulled a ton, you're going to need bigger equipment, but... Um, a 16 port PoE or 24 port PoE is going to work really great in most homes. Unmanaged, which means you just plug them in and they work. If you need power, you plug it into the PoE port. If you don't need power because it's a printer or a workstation, you plug it into the non-PoE port. Everything talks to everything. There's no built-in security, no built-in. I mean, there is physical security, but there's no VLANs and, and additional security on top of that. So that's what I would recommend for you guys. It keeps costs down. It keeps things simple and it can really create you a nice, robust network. Okay, lastly, we're gonna talk about APs and or access points. So in the access point realm, there's maybe fewer options when it comes to unmanaged versus managed. Most access points that you buy, whether it's from Ubiquity or I've been testing out some Alta Labs, which I really, really like their equipment so far, things like that, they are all going to be managed. They're all going to be capable of doing VLANs, but that doesn't mean you have to use that functionality, okay? You, you could just plug it in and have it work. So from an affordable, easy to set up standpoint, I'm going to kind of point a little bit towards Alta Labs. They have made things very, very simple to where you go by the access point, you have access to their free cloud controller where you just log in, add your access points to the network. Once you plug it in and it has access to the internet, the controller can see it and add it and you can create your, define your Wi-Fi networks and build the Wi-Fi in your home. It also allows you to put them in locations like ceilings so you don't have dead spots in your home. If you have a multi-level home, okay, you're gonna want at least one access point on each level. If your house is really wide, Okay, maybe your main level goes really far or you have a garage on one end that you, you know, you provide some entertainment and the master bedrooms on the other end, right? So we see this all the time and it's really wide. Maybe you put two access points on the main level and one up, you know, on the second floor or one in the basement, right? Your coverage will filter up and down. And here's what I'm comparing this to, guys. When you go buy a mesh system, you're going to go and let's say you didn't do any of this planning and you're going to go to a Best Buy and pick up the latest, greatest Eero, Orbi, whatever mesh system. Are those systems good? Yes. Yes, they work great. And they definitely check off the boxes. You're going to get, I mean, if you do like Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 6E and you spend some money, I mean, some of these Orbi systems cost $1,000 for three of them. That's not necessarily saving money. Um, so, and the thing I will argue is they are built to be consumer grade equipment. Orbi wants you to buy the latest, greatest Orbi next year and the year after. It's kind of like our cell phones. We all have a thousand dollar cell phone in our pocket, but when the next version comes out, we're rushing to the store to buy another one. 
okay? Orbeez in the same boat. They're not gonna make money if they build you a, a Wi-Fi access point system and make it last forever, okay? So there's always gonna be new bells and whistles they're gonna try and, and buzzwords, Wi-Fi 7 and Wi-Fi 6E and things they're gonna try and do to get you to sway that direction. I'm here to tell you guys, you don't have to listen to that stuff. You really don't. If you just have simple needs, you want affordable, go get a Wi-Fi 6 access point. Alta Labs makes a couple. They're 179 bucks a piece, something like that. They're not super expensive. Depending on the size of your home will really determine it. They're easy to set up. I have some videos where I talk about it. There's in my channel where I go and look at Alta Labs and how they compete to Ubiquity. For someone who just wants simple, plug it in and go. Guys, it really is a great option. Now, if you are gonna go something a little bit more advanced, I typically recommend Ubiquity, okay? And we'll talk about that here shortly, but there's a method to the madness. And then sometimes when you're building out a more advanced network, it's in your best interest to build all the equipment the same, have the same model brand of router, switch, and access point so all the system works together. So we're gonna talk about that next. But for someone who just wants to plug something in and go, have good Wi-Fi coverage, great speeds, easy to manage, Guys, you cannot go wrong with the Alta Labs uh, Wi-Fi 6 access points. They really, really are awesome. I've been testing them. I have four Ubiquity access points in my home. I went down to two Alta Lab access points and ran the whole thing, and I didn't get one complaint. We didn't have any buffering on our TVs. We Everything just worked great. So I really do think they are a great player in the space, but they're... Uh, they're still they're still coming into it. They're a new player, so they don't, they're just now releasing their switches. They don't have any routers out yet. They're really trying to piece this thing together and give you guys some great consumer prosumer options. They are still a prosumer brand, but that can compete with the ubiquities out there. So we'll see how that plays out. But I really really do like them. So we're talking TP-Link router, something like that, or your ISP router, right? So kind of. One of those for your router. You just need a router, something that is going to take your internet connection and create a local network for you on your house. If you get one from your internet provider, just use it, no big deal. It can handle it, I promise you. You're gonna need a switch. The switch is gonna need to be sized accordingly. Number of PoE plus ports and the total number of ports that you need to be able to plug in all your equipment based off of the cables you ran in part one, all right? and you're gonna need some access points, okay? So the access points are what are gonna provide Wi-Fi in your home, right? Which means, kind of circling back to the router, no matter what router you buy, we are gonna log into that and turn off the Wi-Fi. Now you don't have to do that, excuse me, but I feel it's in your best interest to do so. Make all your devices connect to the Wi-Fi you installed in your home and just turn off the Wi-Fi in the router and just make it be a router. You're, it makes things easier and it's easier to manage so you know you know that every Wi-Fi device in your house is connected to one of your access points and not connected to a completely separate device in your house. Just take it out of there and take it off the Wi-Fi game and just run Wi-Fi on your access points. All right, guys, so that's your simple network. Now we're gonna get a little bit more complex. We've kind of covered the concept of what we're talking about. Let's talk about how this style of network is a little bit different and we'll go from there. All right. All right, guys, so let's talk a little bit more advanced. Let's, let's talk about someone who wants to spend just a little bit more money on their network, but also get some extended capabilities. Now, I don't work for Ubiquity. I've just installed it a lot. I really like it. And there's plenty of haters out there for any brand you use. I mean, I have, I've met people who hate Meraki. <laughs> there's all sorts of brands out there. And for every person that likes it, there's someone who hates it. I personally am, a, you know, especially in this consumer space, for the home user, I really, really like Ubiquity. I think it does a great job. I think it gives the homeowner a lot of extended capabilities that you get from the big big brands that enterprise level and small businesses use, but in your home. So if at the beginning you asked, when we asked what kind of network you want, you said, you know what? I want something a little bit more advanced. I'm not afraid of it, okay? But I want something to be able to do VLANs. I want to be able to create a network just for my kids to be on and I limit what they can get onto. I want to be able to create, I, I, want, I have a lot of IoT devices in my network and I want to be able to secure that network so if I get hacked or one of those devices gets compromised, I don't have to worry about it getting to my computer. And guys, Ubiquity is a great way of doing that. So the, the, the one I have behind me here over here, this is the Unified Dream Machine Pro. I really like it. They have a Dream Machine Pro SE model that has some a couple PoE ports on it. Um, it has a built-in drive on it, so you can 
buy Ubiquiti cameras and actually record right to your router. You don't have to buy a separate NVR to record to. It's actually built right into the, to the router itself. So I really, really do like that about it. Um, this right above it is a 16 port PoE switch. Um, again, uh, all 16 ports are PoE. Uh, all six ports of this are PoE plus, which is really nice. It doesn't have a ton of power on the switch overall. So it, it does have some limitations, but it gives you all the capabilities to be able to do VLANs and plug things in and, and ensure that when your kids connect to the kids network and the parents connect to the parents network and the IOT devices connect to the IOT network, that this switch can handle being able to talk effectively to that. All right. And then you have your Ubiquiti access points. Now, I really am a big fan of the U6 LR access point. It's a Wi-Fi 6. Um, a lot of people talk about the U6 uh, Pro access point, and it's right up there with that one. I really, I, I think it's better personally from a range standpoint, but either one of those options are would make a great option. If you have simple Wi-Fi needs, maybe your house isn't quite as big and you don't need the coverage as, as much, they also make a U6 Lite access point, which I think is like 99 bucks. So again, it makes it, uh, you, your, your home, your plan will determine kind of what you need, but you really can't go wrong with the unified dream machine, some kind of a switch, whether it's 16 port, eight port, whatever, 24 port. I have a 48 port at my house. It just kind of depends on what your needs are. And again, playing those same games, how many ports do you need that are PoE plus? How much power do you need at the switch off to power everything? How many total ports you need? You need to be looking at all these things as you put this thing together, right? So if this really, I mean, we don't call it planning for nothing. You are planning out your network. The last thing you wanna do is buy a switch and it doesn't have as much as enough juice for you and you have stuff rebooting for no reason, okay? And then we're talking about the LR access points, the U6 LR access points from Ubiquiti or the U6 Pro or the U6 Lite. They are all decent options, all Wi-Fi 6, all work really, really well in the Ubiquiti ecosystem. Gives you a single point where you can manage everything. You create your network in the controller, which is built into the Dream Machine, and you or you change a password, and it just tells everything, all the new configuration. It's single. You don't have to log into each one and, and do it. It really does make it easier. So... Now, some of the benefits of using something like this, one, it's prettier to look at, guys. You put something in a rack like that, it just looks better. I, um, I have no problem with someone coming down and seeing my network when it looks like this. So it is a little bit more of a show-off piece than, say, just sticking some stuff on a shelf. You're going to be able to get some additional enhancements like the VLANs we talked about. The UDM Pro has content filtering built in so you can create some special rules you can do wi-fi scheduling so your wi-fi certain wi-fi networks turn on or off when you need to um, again the vlans which create separation in your network so you can create an iot network and actually have it be locked down a guest network being locked down things like that that we use in our everyday space so when you sit back and you go god what type of network do i really want if this is the type of thing that uh interest you, I highly, highly encourage you to look at Ubiquiti. Now, I have some videos, again, where I talk about don't be, you don't have to be afraid of Ubiquiti. And I show you how to create a secure network in your home with IoT devices using this equipment right here. And it, it's, it, you'll really see that it's nothing to be scared of. You don't have to be scared of this thing, okay? It really is good equipment. I stand behind it. I've had great luck with it. I know there's a lot of haters out there, but that's just the way it goes. All right, so now that we got that covered, we're gonna talk about the hybrid version, okay? So we're gonna talk about the hybrid version next, and I'll tell you exactly what that means here in just a second. Okay, so what exactly do I mean about a hybrid version of the network? Well, it's simple, guys. Just because you have this style of equipment in your home in a nice rack doesn't mean you have to use all the bells and whistles. Maybe you don't want them today because maybe your children are really, really young and you don't know whether or not you're going to need those restrictions in the future um, because you're the only one that uses it. But in three short years or two short years, you know, they're going to start being online more and you might want some of those restrictions. Maybe you don't have IoT devices and that's okay. Or maybe you don't care and that's fine too. We do, we see a lot of everything. Okay. So the hybrid version of this is buying the nice equipment like Ubiquity 
but just setting it up as a flat network, as we call it in the IT space. It just means you're not going to have VLANs. You're not going to have all the built-in schedules. You're not going to have a kids network and an IoT network and all that stuff. You don't have any of that. You just have the nice equipment that has the horsepower and the speed and the longevity of using prosumer style equipment. And then you just set it up as a basic network. Okay. So we do that a lot too right? There's not a lot of people, unless you have specific needs where you want VLANs and you're going to manage this thing. Um, a lot of people just want simple. They want to turn it on, plug it in and go. When they stream, they, they don't care if their TV's on a different network than their cell phone, right? And I got to remind you guys about something too. VLANs are great. I, lo I love messing with them. I love playing with it. Security in general is great, but it is a double-edged sword, okay? We have restrictions on my kids' cell phones using a, a special app, and there'll be something where it blocks something it's not supposed to. And then I have to carve time out of my day to try and figure out what the heck is going on. Why did it block that when it, in my opinion, isn't supposed to? So it's the same thing with this. Guys, if you set up all the security and all of a sudden you try to run your Sonos from your cell phone and you can't do it, now you have created a troubleshooting situation for yourself that you have to dive into and start Googling things and watching videos. So security is a little bit of a double-edged sword. That's why I like the hybrid approach. Get the nice equipment that's capable of it, or maybe you just wanna do a simple little network thing. Maybe, maybe your office, uh, you do some really important stuff in your office and you just want it to be on a separate network that's kind of segregated, but the rest of the house, no big deal, okay? That's another special circumstance that you could do that with Ubiquity equipment very, very easy and not create a lot of trouble for your house. So I love the hybrid approach, guys. I mean, if I'm going shopping for my network, I'm buying this over this, but that does not mean this is a bad thing. This is a very affordable option. And if I had to just throw rough numbers at it, right? You're looking at 1500 bucks over here versus maybe 650, 750 bucks over here. So it's not even a huge difference in, 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 um, in cost, to be honest with you. And this has all the capabilities. This is just much simpler to use. So you really have to ask yourself, what do I want from my network? And then choose the equipment that answers that question, that equipment or that question, excuse me, the best. All right. So next we are going to be talking about, and I told you to stay to the end, I'm going to talk about ways that you can plan your Wi-Fi, right? If you're unfamiliar with that process and planning heat maps and just how do I know where to put the access points in my house where I'm going to get coverage, okay? We're going to talk about that next. I'm going to show you a free software tool that you can use actually by Ubiquity that allows you to kind of plan your Wi-Fi and we're going to talk about it. Now, I think this is the good time as well, if you've made it this far in the video, that I do have some links in the bio that actually teach people how to do this, start to finish, how to plan your home network, how to plan your Wi-Fi, how to do everything, how to talk. We break down the switches and what to look for in the power and how to plan this whole thing in a little bit more detail. This is a YouTube video, so we're talking pretty high level and we're talking pretty fast. So this is just to kind of plant the seed. If you guys want a deeper dive, I recommend doing that. I have the PDF version that allows you to just kind of download it and read about it. I also have the course version that isn't super long. I tried to make it so it's you don't have to spend a week learning this stuff. But at the end of the day, there is a course version that allows you to kind of just learn through video how to kind of piece this thing together. And it goes into a ton more detail about what we're talking about. So if that interests you guys, click the links below. If you're building a house, guys, this is important stuff. I can't say it enough. You are going to use your network every single day. Streaming ain't going anywhere. Gaming ain't going anywhere. It's just getting bigger, better, faster. And putting hardline, hardline cables, physical connectivity in your house is super important. This is just how to put it all together. So I hope you found this helpful. And next, we're going to just quickly dive into Wi-Fi. Again, keeping it very high level, I'm going to show you a tool you can use. There are other videos out on the internet where you can kind of learn and kind of piece it together. And of course, my course is always available. Um, I do have a just Wi-Fi planning course that's cheaper um, if that's the only part part that you're inter about, interested in learning in. So, all right, let's get going. All right, guys, welcome back. I hope you're still with us. If you are, we are going to be talking about a free tool, like I promised you at the beginning, where we talk about how to plan the Wi-Fi in your home. So if you are inexperienced in this, you're not an IT guy, but you like the idea of having great Wi-Fi, whether you're doing the simple 
style network with the Ulta Labs or you got some Ubiquiti access points. Again, both great options and you can mix and match. Okay, you don't have to use Ubiquity with Ubiquity stuff. I just find that if you're gonna have a Ubiquity router or a, a, a router, a switch and access points, it helps to have them all be in the same software, okay? This version over here, you have a TP-Link router, an unmanaged switch you can't log into, and then Wi-Fi that you log into a separate controller to be able to manage them. It's gonna require you to have to kind of move around to get that configured. But regardless of which one you choose, you need to know where to put your Wi-Fi in your house, right? How do you even do that? So what I'm gonna be talking about is a thing called Unify Design Center. And Unify Design Center is really built to help a user log in. You upload your floor plan of your house. So you need a, some kind of a PDF floor plan that you can do. And then basically it allows you to draw in walls where they go on your floor plan. So make sure it's fairly detailed, okay? But you draw in your walls, you draw in all the stuff on each level of your home, and then you can actually grab ubiquity access points. So like the LRs, the, LR, uh, the U6 Pro and the U6 Lite, those are all options that you could grab and just start placing them. And it'll give you a colored heat map of the coverage in your house with the walls where you have them and everything. It really is a great tool and the and it's 100% free. You do not have to pay to use it. It is absolutely fantastic. Now, this isn't meant to give you a course in how to do it, but at the end of the day, I want you to know it exists. So, well, what if, what if you're the type of person who decided to go with the Ulta Labs? That's no problem, all right? So what you're gonna do, you're gonna actually go pull up the specs of the Ulta Labs access point and pull up the specs of the Ubiquity access points, okay? And you gotta find one that's probably the closest. So the, I'll just give you the, the Ulta Labs Pro AP. They only have two. So that's a, it's an Ulta Labs 6 Pro AP and then is probably closest to the Ubiquity Pro AP. The, the specs are very, very similar between those two devices. So you would just do your heat map with the U6 Pro access point in your heat mapping because you can't go pull an Ulta Labs access point. It's not in the list, it's a Ubiquity tool. But we know that the U6 Ulta Labs AP is very, very similar and specced very closely to the U6 Pro access point. And so you would just use the Ubiquiti U6 Pros, place them where you want them, get the cables to those locations. So when the time comes, you can just go ahead and pop up your AP, but you would install the U6 Pro from, or excuse me, the uh, Ulta Labs Pro AP. Um, and you got Wi-Fi. So if, if you plan on using outside access points, whether it's Meraki or maybe you like the TP-Link, they have an Omada with a controller and some things like that. You're doing your research, you like the idea. The trick is just to kind of pull up the specs of whatever AP you're planning to use and then go find its counterpart in Ubiquity. Ubiquity makes a whole different series of access points from Wi-Fi 6, outdoor access points, AC, which is Wi-Fi 5. Uh, they even have some, um, what they call the U6 Enterprise, which is their, Wi-Fi 6E access points. So again, you can really compare and find what their version of whatever you're looking for is, then just build your, design it out and away you go. Now, the one thing I will tell you in this video, give you a hint, this is a two dimensional planning software. So if you have multiple levels of your home, you need to kind of, it's, it's, it works best if you kind of stagger things, okay? And focus on the areas where you're gonna need connectivity areas where there's TVs and you're streaming, or maybe you need to put it close to a back patio, right? So you can go sit outside and the Wi-Fi bleeds outside. If you need outdoor Wi-Fi guys, plan on putting some outdoor Wi-Fi out there. It's gonna help you and it really, really does come in handy. Um, so think about those type of things. So you're not just putting six access points in your you know, small house because you didn't have green perfect coverage everywhere, guys. Do some research on the on the design center, or even better, take my course. Um, it's going to help kind of paint the picture, but it is a free tool out there for you to use so you can plan your Wi-Fi, and it works awesome. That's it, guys. Thank you for tuning in this video. I really appreciate it. If you made it through the whole thing, I know I can be long-winded, but the whole goal is to help you build in a great network in your new construction home. This is an exciting process, but you would be surprised how often this kind of stuff gets left out. 
people build this great home, they focus on the landscape and the countertops and all the great fun things about building a house and they forget all about the connectivity. It is in your best interest. It is the cheapest time to do it when you're building your house to put cables where you want them, even if you don't plan on using them day one. And we talk about that in this seri video series. So I highly encourage you guys, if you're building a home, put cables into them, um, plan out where your equipment's gonna set and really have a plan for this because the homes of today are not like the homes 20 years ago. The connectivity needs of everybody on the planet are there. And so I really encourage you to put in this. It's gonna add value to your home when you go to sell it. People look for this stuff now and it really is, does take your home to a whole new level. Whether you do a simple network, whoop, well, you do a simple network, you do something a little more complex, or you do a hybrid of both, right? It just is um, a great way to do it, and it, it will help alleviate the buffering issues and the issues with the kids not being able to connect, or, you know, I want to be able to work on my back patio. You know, if you design your Wi-Fi accordingly, it will really help in those areas. My, me personally, I entertain in my garage. We have a TV out there. We have the neighbors come over and watch football games. I don't need bad Wi-Fi in my garage. So by planning it, I was able to put just an access point just inside the door. It bleeds out in the garage very, very nicely. And we all can watch the football game together and not worry about the spinning wheel of death that we all hate. So I hope this is helpful, guys. Uh, check out the links in the description. Uh, they're there for your benefit. I'm not a big sales guy, but I do know there's a lot of pieces to this, okay? And I've been putting in networks in homes for the last eight plus years. Um, there's a lot of pieces of this. And so those guys are there to help you, okay? Um, I hope this is beneficial. We'll see you in a later video. And uh, good luck with your new construction home, guys. We're really proud of you and hope that everything goes well. And we'll see you in a future video.